Today we're talking about LTE or fourth generation cellular data communication. It's creating a lot of excitement worldwide at the moment because people are rolling it out everywhere and it's a radically new cellular technology that will take data speeds up to hundreds of megabits per second and typically faster than almost any of the landline technologies available today and uh, certainly never going to be as fast as uh, fiber optics but uh, it will be about the second closest things to fiber optics. Now there's a number of antenna requirements associated with LTE or 4G networks and uh, the first one I want to discuss, the first default thing that you have to achieve is you have to be able to cover all of the frequency bands that will be used in LTE um, systems. The reason why that is so important is that even though an LTE system could be rolled out at the moment, for example in South Africa they're rolling it out at the moment in the so-called 1800 band because the new bands have not been allocated yet, at some time they're going to shift it to some new frequency band which is not yet used for cellular communication and at that point you may just find that your link is lost. In other words, that you suddenly can no longer talk to a modem uh, when it's a, a LTE modem. And this whole frequency band issue has become a, a, a major driver and a major challenge for antenna manufacturers because if you go look at the drawing of the frequency spectra, we started off years ago at 2G and you can see that we only used 900 megahertz band. And the 900 megahertz band served as well for voice communication and then it got a little bit uh, overcrowded and people added the 1800 band, uh, which is what I call frequency range 1 and frequency range 2. Those were the first two. Then came 3G. 3G was the first data technology that actually offered sort of speeds just below a megabit per second. And you can see that band 2 extended then, uh, you started at about 1700 megahertz up to um, 2 gigahertz at first or 2000 megahertz and uh, 3G extended that to about 2.2 gigahertz. So you can see this band now became, uh, in total, what I call band 2, became from 1,700 to 2,200, which is about 500 megahertz, which is getting fairly wide. Then came LTE, and LTE cannot just be, it's not just like an upgrade on the previous cellular technologies. You actually have to go allocate new bands for it because uh, it's a completely new type of technology, and the old technologies have to be supported until those devices are completely uh, drained from the system. Then people can start using the old bands for LTE communication, but that's going to take a number of years. So some new bands have been allocated. The most exciting is what they call the digital dividend band, which is uh, below the old 900 megahertz band. So as they are transferring television from analog to digital, it frees up spectrum, and we're now taking some of that TV spectrum and using it for data comms, and it gets allocated to cellular phone companies, and they bid on it or some way or the other, they start buying this uh, new bandwidth. And that at the moment in a European context takes you down to about 800 megahertz. So suddenly you now have to go from about 800 megahertz to about a gigahertz in what I call frequency range one. You can see big frequency range there, then you get frequency range two, that's now bigger. Then after the 800 megahertz bands, uh, for LTE specifically and in cities, they've allocated a new frequency range, which I call a frequency range three, from 2.5 to 2.7 gigahertz. Uh, this gives them 200 megahertz, which uh, gives a considerable amount of capacity for LTE systems uh, in city situations, because that frequency does not propagate that well over long distances. There are some other bits and pieces of LTE bands, but these are the major ones. Some of the other ones that may be used are still a band just below our band three, which is from 2.3 to 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, some people are talking about using the old WiMAX band, which is from 3.4 gigahertz to 3.8 gigahertz. And then in the United States and even in parts of Europe, they may still allocate some more of those low frequency bands. So go to, uh, from 800 to almost 700 megahertz uh, in the long term. This is only likely to happen uh, in, in about a few years time, although the Americans are already using the bands from about 700 megahertz upwards. So that's the crucial part. Frequency band is the starting point and that's essential. Like I say, even if your system at the moment does not require those new bands, at some point people are going to switch over and then the systems will fail. So make sure that the, that the antennas can handle those bands and in the next clip I'll talk about the antenna requirements which is much more interesting.